Welcome to another episode of Game Boy Roulette, where we take a look at randomly chosen games from the Game Boy Library. Centipede. Ooh, I smell an arcade port. The 1980s were considered the golden age of video games, and that is especially true for arcades. Galaga, Qbert, Donkey Kong, Pac-Man, Space Invaders, Dig Dug, Joust, Gauntlet, Pole Position. The list of absolute hits from those days goes on and on. Well, that is, before E.T. crashed to the market, then Nintendo restarted the market, inadvertently causing the slow, painful death of arcades. Still, though, one of the most popular arcade machines of the time was Centipede a shoot-'em-up where you faced off against deadly bugs, so it's no surprise that it eventually got ported to the Game Boy. We've discussed arcade ports plenty, so instead, let's talk about some fun details about Centipede. The game was designed by two people, Donna Bailey and Ed Logg. Donna was one of the first female programmers in the gaming industry, and actually designed the game to attract more women to the world of video games. The game also technically has a story. You're actually playing as a garden gnome protecting your mushrooms from evil insects, and there's even a Centipede movie being made. Wait, there is? I just hope it's two hours of shooting bugs. But forget all of that because the cover is amazing. They've taken the most simple of games and given it an insane cover that looks like something out of a rock album. Wait, is that a lightsaber? Okay, maybe there's even more to this game than I thought. Well, it's a legendary game, but how did the port go? Let's blast away with Centipede. Oh, it was made by Majusco. The port, anyway. And Morningstar, who probably did other games. But of course, Atari and Accolade Inc. Oh god, so many people are involved here. <laughs> Look at that title screen. Centipede! Beautiful thing, isn't it? The Code Monkey. How many people worked on this game? I guess them. Whatever, Centipede! It's about as simple of a game as you can get. Oh! Oh, there's difficulty settings. And there's two player. Alternate, compete, team. Or probably, no, that's alternate. Uh, let's start on novice, for I am a tiny centipede baby. Yep, it sure is. Pew, 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 pew. I always loved Centipede. It's actually one of my favorite arcade games. It's like Galaga, but way more fun. You can move much more space. You actually have stuff to do. Uh-oh. These sound effects are decidedly arcadey in a good way. And the animation... It's a little bit jittery up there, but not a big deal. Oh, God. So good at this. Is this good or bad? It's bad. <laughs> okay, I learned something. That thing is bad. This music's actually really catchy. Alright, clearly it's time to jump up to expert mode. Let's go. Oh god, it's so fast. Oh god. No, 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 no! Centipede! Oh god. Centipede, there we go. Bam. Yeah, I never knew that this game is technically about a, a lawn gnome? Whoa. I do not remember that Pokemon in this game. Another thing I like, when they get to the bottom, it's not necessarily over. You can keep moving around like this. Pew pew. Level 30? Oh! Oh, so all it does is change what starting level you're at. I'm okay with that. That's certainly better than the arcades. It's actually also moving at about the speed I remember it moving at in arcades. Maybe a little bit slower due to the, uh, you know, the limitations of the Game Boy, but it's so far a fairly solid conversion. No. Oh, hey, I actually killed it. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Ah! Uh, centipedes everywhere! They're in my hair! What'd I do? what did I do? Oh, I think I have an extra life. I must have done something really good. Like, the sound effects are that perfect in-between between, between arcade sound effects and Game Boy sound. all. Oh. Rip. I want to see if the two-player does anything differently. It won't even let me select it. Oh, I don't have a link cable. Duh. Player one. Okay, so it's pretty much just going to be we go back and forth on the same level. Oh god, it's like they're moving in slow motion now. I was so used to high-level, tournament-style centipede gameplay. Actually, in doing my research for this video, there actually were some, uh, centipede tournaments, and, like, the winners got a bunch of money. Hang on, I want to look that up really quick. Who won the first centipede tournament? Oh god. There was a tournament where they were expecting 
3,000 people to show up, but only about 140 did. So they weren't able to recoup the money that they were going to give to the winners, and then the checks bounced. That was during a time when Atari, like, they had made all the cool games, but they also were making a lot of mistakes. And, you know, kind of almost killed video games forever. Spider! It even maintains the old, um, style where you can shoot very quickly when there are less bullets on the screen. How do I put this? You can only have one bullet on the screen at any given time, so if you do something like that and shoot very quickly, you can kind of do rapid fire. It is miss- I mean, this is not really- I can't really fault the Game Boy for this and the design is for it, but it is missing that color and style that made the original so fun. Apparently they remade the game for Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance, though, so I would imagine those look a lot better. That is such a lovely jingle. Oh! Oh god, okay. I don't have invincibility frames. I just learned something today, and so did you. I mean, nowadays you could probably, you know, run an arcade perfect version of it on the Switch or whatever, but... Those days, the idea of bringing an arcade game home was crazy, and so the idea of having it handheld was even more crazier. And the only other one to check out, let's just see what level standard starts us at. Probably like 9. Oh, 10. Whoa, one ahead of the game. Ah! <coughs> Why does a spider ruin everything I love? It's exactly what I expected in a good way. Like, Batman Forever, last time, was exactly what I expected in the worst way possible. But this is fun! It's a very simple arcade port. It is limiting. You know, there are some arcade ports that added more. This one just went straight for the arcade port. But, for what it is, it's totally fun. It is the arcade game handheld. And again, that's a huge novelty for the time. And novelty can sell games. Just like that jingle can. Sometimes, arcade conversions go exactly as they should. There are some arcade ports that try to add in new gameplay or really mess with the formula, but Centipede kept things nice and simple, just bringing the direct mechanics over. And honestly, that's fine as long as the gameplay is still there, and thankfully it was. Centipede is all about speed and quick reflexes, and they managed to keep that completely intact while shrinking the game down. It moved and played about as well as the original, which is certainly better than a lot of arcade ports I've played. Adding in some two-player modes and adjustable difficulty was also nice, adding a pinch of variety. If anything, that's my one nitpick. The variety was just a pinch. You've seen the whole game within the first few minutes. It's just about getting a high score, so you're not going to be finding any more story or anything. And the lack of colors does hurt it, as Centipede was one of the most bright and colorful arcade games of the time. But again, those are nitpicks, and they don't take away from the experience at all. If you want a proper arcade game shrunk down perfectly to the Game Boy, look no further than Centipede. But now, on to more pressing matters. They're seriously making a movie out of this? And that's all for another episode of Game Boy Roulette. Make sure to subscribe so you can follow the series as we continue to dig through the Game Boy Vault. I'm Brian J, and I'll see you next time.